pitter patter. Do you like the sound of rain at night? Is it calming to you? Does it lull you to sleep? Uh, you know, I've had a sound machine for some years now, and that has several different soundtracks of sounds that are designed to help you fall asleep. There's white noise that supposedly blocks out distracting noises. To me, it sounds like static and it's distracting and anything but calming. And of course, there's sounds of rain, waves breaking, babbling brook, several other sounds. My absolute favorite sound to go to sleep with is the sound of waves breaking on the beach. The real live kind. Machine sounds aren't quite as good and you can hear the looping of the recorded sounds, which kind of distracts from the calming. When I lived on in Keikaha and Kauai, I lived in a house right across the street from the ocean. There was a little beach and lots of lava rocks. I could hear the waves breaking on the beach through my window. So I got the best sleep of my life when I lived there. It was so nice. You may be wondering, well, what's your point? Well, I'm not selling sound machines, but I was thinking as I was drifting off to slumberland last night, listening to the real rain on the roof, what is it about the sound of rain that is so hypnotizing? Yeah, it's probably pretty obvious. It's a constant, regular, just a pleasant sound. Obviously, I'm not talking about hard, heavy storm rain but the medium to soft, regular, steady pitter-patter of rain falling on the roof. Then it struck me. You know, that must be why the vast majority of people seem to be resistant to the super advantageous finance strategy we call the tax-free cash growth warehouse based on the infinite banking concept. What? Hear me out. The constant, regular, steady buzzing the majority of the financial world keeps playing, you know, the old tune of put 10% of your income into a bank savings account, pay the maximum into your employer's 401k retirement plan, use bank issued credit cards and personal loans, use bank loans to finance car purchases, furniture, vacations, and everything else. It's the known, accepted way of financing things. You don't need to try to find a better way. Anything that sounds like it might be better is probably a scam. Everybody does it this way. You don't want to be different. Nobody's doing that. Yeah. It sounds a bit hypnotic, doesn't it? It's calming, soothing, comfortable. There's safety in numbers. It must be the right way, the best way. Uh, nope. It's the best way for the banks, but not for you. The banks profit in a big way from all that hypnotic pitter-patter. I'm not saying it's bad or wrong to make a profit. That's capitalism. Every business needs to make a profit. When a business provides a service or product that is helpful, it deserves to make a profit. It's right for them to make a profit. If they don't, they won't be able to continue providing the service and or products that help people. But it's not right to gouge people and make unfair profits. Capitalism says that whatever the market will bear is fair, but not when the marketing is hyperbole and falsehoods and fueled by keeping the consuming public in ignorance. Again, based on falsehoods. For example, grocery stores typically mark their products up so they can make a profit of 10 to 15%, and that's fair. But if they were to mark things up so that after all their costs, including rents, labor, product costs, and so forth, they were to make 400% profit or more, would you think that fair? Most of us probably wouldn't be able to afford to buy food. Well. What is the profit banks make? Let's take a look at some numbers. Banks charge interest on credit cards of from 15 to 25% APR. Personal loans from about 10 to 25%. Auto loans from two and a half to 5%. And 
But auto loans and mortgages are amortized interest, which means that those tiny looking percentage rates actually work out to be around 10 to 20% on five to seven year auto loans and more than 100% on 30 year mortgage loans. Wow. Now, what do banks pay in interest on your savings accounts? About one half a percent to maybe as high as two and a half percent. So banks are making something like 400 to 1000 percent profit. And here's the thing. You can do a whole lot better than that when you redirect your savings into a guaranteed high compounding interest bearing tax free cash growth warehouse account. Back to the hyperbole and falsehood marketing. Just the other day, I saw an ad for a bank paying 9.15% APR on savings accounts. Can you believe that? Holy smoke. Really, I had to look into that. Guess what the truth is that I found out about that supposed 9.15% APR. First, you have to leave your money in the account for five years without touching it. If you take anything out at all, you forfeit the interest. And it's not compounding interest. If you leave it in the account for five years, then at the end of the term, they'll pay you 9.15%. That means that if you deposit $1,000 at the end of five years, they'll give you $95.10. If it were actually 9.15% APR, that would be $457.50, which would be really pretty good. And I would consider fair in face of what they charge for loans. But if that were 9.15% compounding APR, it would be $549.23, which is 20% more. So you see, the promise of 9.15% APR is completely false. Now compare that to this, 6% compounding APR. You can leverage your savings with low, simple interest loans, without interrupting the compounding growth of your savings. And the growth is tax-free. You take policy loans without having to go through long applications and credit checks and management approvals. This infinite banking tax-free cash growth warehouse method virtually doubles the power of your money, eliminates opportunity costs, and provides financial protection for your family if something should happen to you and you die. So yeah, the whole setup is different from what the majority of people are doing. Instead of a bank, we use participating whole life insurance. Whoa, life insurance? No thanks, that's expensive. And who ever heard of using life insurance instead of a bank? And I'm here to tell you, yes, participating whole life insurance. With participating whole life, you actually become an owner of the insurance company. And that's why you get paid high compounding dividend interest. When you open a savings account at a bank, do you get any ownership of the bank? No way. In fact, far from paying you, they charge you fees when you entrust a bank with your money. And then they use your money to invest and make many times more money on your money then they pay you in interest. So as far as being expensive, banks pay insultingly low interest on your money, which they use to make big profits for themselves, then charge you fees when you allow them to use your money like that and charge you exorbitant interest rates when you borrow from them or use their credit accounts. With whole life, when you open an account, you deposit premiums to the company. In return, the company is under contract to pay out several times what you agree to pay them in total in the event of your death. And if that happens earlier in the contract rather than later, the amount they pay out will be many, many times the amount you paid in. As Warren Buffett says, if you can buy dollars for 80 cents each, that's a very smart thing to do. But in the case of whole life, it's more like paying 30 cents for each dollar 
or much better. Then, if your account is set up for infinite banking and the tax-free cash growth warehouse, the insurance becomes virtually free after just about five years. And the company keeps on paying you. So, rather than being expensive, participating whole life is an incredibly good deal. It's bank accounts that are expensive. As for who uses whole life for savings, only the smartest, wealthiest people in American history, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Carnegie, J.C. Penney, Ray Kroc, Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and so many more. But you don't have to be wealthy to do this. Nearly anybody can and should be using this incredible finance strategy. That's why I've made it my mission to educate and help people with this most powerful finance strategy in history. I don't charge people for what I do. So if you want to uh, you know, explore what infinite banking, tax-free cash growth warehouse strategy can do for you, book a call with me on my Calendly page. The link is in the description box below this video. Or fill out the application to become a client. The link is in the description box. I'll get back to you and answer your questions so you can decide if infinite banking is for you. Feel free to post a comment or question here and please click the like, but the like button and subscribe to this channel. We're here to help. I look forward to helping you. Aloha and mahalo for watching.